I mean, it is very important, and we're looking at a, a full year of negotiation on, on investments between the European Union and China. That should be leading to uh, eventually a, an agreement in September in Leipzig, but that needs to have a series of important meetings to move forward on key issues, where you're looking at reciprocity in terms of, of, of investment between state-owned enterprises in, uh, in, uh, in China and some European companies, or whether you're looking at the inclusion of sustainability in, in the trade uh, talks. All these you know, key issues need to be negotiated step by step. And the visit from Liu He is extremely important in Brussels. Uh, it might have been postponed due to the coronavirus. That was the, the fear that, that most people had in terms of uh, the business uh, um, circles in, in Europe and China. Uh, but the fact that he's actually making this visit to, uh, to Brussels seems to show that the talks for a, a comprehensive investment agreement between the European Union and China are still on, on, on track and should actually uh, reach uh, the, the, the finish line on time. Uh, if they can reach an agreement, what might that look like, uh, Beijing and Brussels, uh, signing a deal, and, and how would it benefit both sides? I mean, here, the idea of finding a deal is try to, you know, get a, a better grant for economic relations between China and the European Union. Keep in mind that last year, China has been labeled a strategic rival by the European Union because of the, of the issue of, of the lack of reciprocity in terms of investment, meaning that European companies do not receive the same treatment whether in China, that Chinese uh, national companies, well, it's not the case in the European Union where there's actually much more of a, of a free competition between uh, potential foreign investors and local investors. The idea here is really to have you know, this, this strong block of agreement on which you could have a series of, of future increased and deepened uh, relationship, especially in, in, in sectors of, of, of the future, where you're looking at high technologies, whether you're looking at, at food security, whether you're looking at health uh, sector, there's, there's a series of different uh, vertical in, in the European and Chinese economy that would strongly benefit from a better and, and more secure relation between the European Union and China, something that China does not enjoy with the United States, where you still have keep some knee-jerk decision from the Trump administration. On this level, you do have a much more stable relation between the European Union and China, on which China and the European could benefit in the long term. I was looking at the numbers, telecom equipment, the number one export from China to the EU. You know that the Trump administration is trying to do all they can to really kind of disrupt those relationships with Huawei. How do you see that playing out in the future? Well, Huawei is a very interesting, uh, you know, question and, and, and topic here, especially when you look at the decision, uh, likely decision from uh, the Boris Johnson administration in, in, a, in a Brexit leaving Great Britain that is moving towards authorizing Huawei to actually, uh, you know, implement a, a part of its network on some less sensitive areas. So you see that the, um, even, the, even the UK, and in a larger sense, the European Union doesn't share the same position than the Trump administration towards Huawei. The idea here is clearly to understand that Huawei or other Chinese companies have, have been able to develop some clear competitive um, uh, capacities that other companies do not have and, and cut itself from Huawei, same, similarly as cutting itself from maybe European investment in China, is also meaning that you might have your own economy lag behind because you do not you know, benefit from the latest technology in, in key sectors. And that is also the case for China looking and working with a, with a series of European companies when you look at, at aeronautics with Airbus, for example, being much more competitive and more secure at Boeing or other companies in the military sector uh, or at least you know, uh, issues of security or issues of, of high technology and, and, and health where the European companies are, are far advanced in terms of competition.